Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you the modeling version of how to make a bulk heterojunction in Blender. This is super fun and can also be used to create all kinds of very unusual abstract art forms that you could put into landscapes if you wanted to. So go ahead, grab the default cube, hit S and 0.25 because we're going to scale that down quite a bit. Then come to the modifiers and we're going to add three array modifiers. One for X, making sure we check merge. One for Y, by just changing relative offset in the y direction to 1, 0 to x, and again with merge, and then a third one for z. So one more time, 1 for z, 0 for x, and merge enabled. What we're going to do now is actually we're going to use these to essentially create a rectangle. So I'm just going to drag the count up until I've got roughly the shape of a rectangle that I want. And you do want a good number of points. More points is going to be a little bit harder computationally to deal with, but it's also going to give you a better, more varied result. Once you've got your rectangle, I'm pretty happy with this. Then go ahead and apply those modifiers in order. One, two, and three. And if you hit Z and come to wireframe, you'll notice that not we don't just have a rectangle, we have a rectangle with a ton of internal vertices, namely 1,496. So right click set origin and choose origin to geometry then you can see the little yellow ball is here so that is our origin hit shift s and we're going to choose selection to cursor and that's just going to bring our rectangle into the center of the frame so how are we going to use this to create a bulk heterojunction well we're going to do it with meta balls so z come back into solid view and now with shift a we're going to go add a meta ball Drag that out by hitting G and X, and you can see what we've got here. We have to come down to the actual settings for object data properties, and we're going to change the resolution viewport to 0.1. We want this to be a really cool metaball and nice and smooth. Now, the funny thing about metaballs is if I were to duplicate this one and just move it over, you could see they do this interesting effect where they merge with each other when they're in close proximity. I don't actually want to do that right now, but that means that when I use this object as a particle system, with these metaballs it's going to merge them into close proximity wherever they are connected to one another and the way that we're going to do that to make it interesting and get that kind of free form bulk heterojunction is we'll tab into edit mode hit z and come into wireframe alt a to deselect everything and then we're going to come with vertex selection so make sure you're on vertex select select and select random and I usually go with whatever comes up first, but if you want to try different orientations, you can just go through select random and change different seeds. You can change different percent randomness. All that kind of stuff is available as options. Once you've got your random selection of vertices, make a note of the number 748, come to the object data properties for the cube and add in a vertex group. We're just going to assign all the vertices. So we have 748. Now we're going to come to the particle properties tab, add in a new hair particle system with, you guessed it, 748 for the number of particles. For source, we're going to use verts. We're going to uncheck random order, come down to vertex groups. The density we're going to choose is the group that we just made. And for render, we're going to choose render as object, and the object that we're going to render is that meta ball. So with all of this done, now I'll tab out of edit mode, and you can see if we come into solid view, those are all of our meta balls connecting to each other. This admittedly doesn't look great, but again, we can just simply grab this meta ball, scale it up a little bit. And once we've done that, they're all going to start to intersect in interesting ways. And that is more of a look that I want. You can also scale this in specific directions. So X or Y or Z to get kind of the look that you want. I am reasonably happy with this. If we come into wireframe, you can see this is a very complicated mesh internally. That's all fantastic. You might be tempted at this point to think, okay, I know a little bit about particle systems. I'm going to come to the modifier properties and convert this. Don't do that because that will then give you 748 individual metaballs. Instead, we're going to cheat a little bit by grabbing our metaball, hitting F3 and choosing convert to. And what we're going to convert to is mesh. So mesh from curve, meta, surface, text, etc. So we're going to convert that giant metaball, this one, and now all of these into a single object. We're actually going to hide our original cube. We're done with it. We don't need it anymore. And you can actually see now we have our mesh. So we're going to do a few things here. We're just going to first select our mesh and we'll call this donor mesh. It could be the acceptor mesh, but we're going to call this the donor mesh. 
grab the actual ball, tab into edit mode, hit Z to come to wireframe view, and just drag out over that and hit X to delete those vertices. We don't actually need them. You'll notice the origin, the geometry origin is over here. We also don't want that. So grab the object in object mode, set origin, right click, sorry, right click, set origin, origin to geometry, and now the origin is back here. That's all well and good. How are we going to use this to create the other side? Well, we're going to use a Boolean modifier. So simply in object mode, shift A, add in a cube, scale that cube out along Y, X, and Z until it basically just overlaps the edges of this mesh. So something like that is okay. And we'll scale it in on Y a bit and maybe down just a bit on Z. That's good. Once you've done that, control A and apply the scale. As I said, this will be the other side. So this will be our acceptor mesh. And now we're going to start adding a few modifiers. First, we're going to add a bevel modifier. We'll change the segments to two, limit method to angle. Uh, the offset can stay, let's drop it down to 0.02. And then we will add a subdivision surface also of two. And basically what we're going to do here is we're going to use this mesh this donor mesh to cut out this one with a boolean but first we want to do something we want to smooth this mesh out as much as possible if our cutter is very smooth then our invert or our cast will also be very smooth so come to modifiers add a smooth modifier factor we'll go with one and repeat let's say two to start that's fine once you've done that just go ahead and apply it from here we're going to come back to our original object choose boolean and for boolean difference we're going to choose that donor mesh and on the surface this doesn't look like it's done anything but when we actually go ahead grab our donor mesh and hide it you can see what we've now achieved which is this beautiful internal structure you might also notice that the shading on it looks very very unusual in places easy fix for that object data properties normals auto smooth the normals and that will fix some weird shading aberrations if you have them. Do not, do not, do not try to add a subdivision surface after this. Right now, this thing is a crazy pile of vertices. It's horribly disordered. If you add a subdivision surface, it will almost definitely destroy your computer. But we can still do a little bit of stuff here. So this is a Boolean modifier. It's going to update unless we apply it. So if I am not happy with the mesh, I can go ahead, hit S and Y and say, scale the mesh out a little bit. I can do the same with my cube and control where I'm going to see that effect come into play. Boolean can be a little bit tricky at times. So if you scale into certain regions, it might cause the cube to disappear. If you want to sort of rule out some of that possibility, just grab your cube, right click, choose subdivide and go with a reasonable number of cuts, let's say 20. Once you've done that again, you can hide your donor mesh. You can see all of this internal geometry. It looks pretty good. If you're not necessarily happy with how it all looks, grab your donor mesh and then apply a subdivision surface to the donor mesh or the part that you're cutting out with. It'll take a little while to load, but once you've done that, everything inside will just be a little bit smoother. These kind of shading things over here, usually just a bit of a defect. Sometimes you kind of can't avoid that. In fact, that should have been turned on. It wasn't turned on, and now we can actually see what the effect is. So the shading defects have been resolved. Again, want to be there. And so the reason that you would really want to do this as opposed to the texturing approach is this is real. So what we can do is we can actually isolate the two meshes and view them independently. I can see all of the acceptor part if I want. I can see all of just the donor part if I want. Obviously the donor part looks a little bit more like a blob, but you can sort of have this option to visualize these two. And of course, once you've made your acceptor mesh, if you want to, you could use it as a cutout as well. So if I put another cube of similar size right here, so just duplicating my acceptor mesh, dropping it back into place by right clicking, scaling up just a little bit, and then actually changing the Boolean so it's using the acceptor mesh. Now if I scale that in, this secondary cube, there we go. Hide that one. Now you can see I've got a bit more of a alien ant farm looking type structure here. And this would be how you would make these little cross sections. So you could use these for all kinds of things. I use them for organic solar cell, bulk heterojunction, donor acceptor meshes. You could use them for 
brain tissue if you extended this out over a very large area. All kinds of things that look, quite frankly, very, very cool. So tons of options. You can also do sort of tomography cross sections by just adding in extra cubes, say cutters, bringing them up, and then going ahead and adding another Boolean modifier over this. So let's say Boolean and we'll add a difference with this new cube that we've made. So we'll call this cube cutter, and then we'll just add the cutter as an option. So you could drag that down and we'll change the uh, viewport visibility of it so that it is only wire. Now you can actually see that we could cross section this as we go through. So we can look at where all these domains fit into each other. You can uh, apply the same modifier to the mesh that you use to create it. So in this case, we'll use this. Um, we'll use another Boolean. We'll apply the cutter Boolean to this as well. And then we'll make it visible in the viewport by adding distinct materials to each one. So Z, wireframe, new. Let's make the first mesh a blue. Let's make the second mesh a red. Now you could see where they're going to appear by sort of cutting through the pair of them. And of course you can visualize them independently. So I can cut through one, I can view the other one and cut through just the first. Again, if you're going to mess with Boolean, sometimes you have to deal with a little bit of artifacting, but you can actually see these surfaces evolve as you move through, which is just really, really, in my mind at least, quite cool. A few bugs to be worked out here and there. In any case, as always, thanks for coming out. Hopefully you found this interesting or useful. If you did, consider subscribing with your the consider subscribing with your friends and colleagues. Consider subscribing with your friends and colleagues. I'm not gonna edit the outro this time. So consider subscribing with your friends and colleagues and hopefully use this to make some figures. Until next time. You have yourself a great old day.